Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Jim and I've spent the last 40 years farming and logging with draft horses. In this seven part series, I'm going to be covering some of the basic essentials of owning and caring for draft horses. I know there are many different ways of doing things. My goal is to just to show you what has worked well for me and what I wish I had known starting out. So each Friday we'll have a new segment of this series. But stay tuned for, on Mondays and Wednesdays for our normal videos about our everyday life of working with horses. Hello, welcome to Working Horses with Jim and our Horse Basics series. Today we're going to be talking about harnessing horses. And if you missed our last video, we talked about the part, parts of the harness. I shouldn't say we did, I, um, Jim did. But anyways, Jim's here today and he's going to be harnessing and showing you what all is involved with harnessing horses. Okay, so today I'm going to show you the way I harness my horses. Um, there are numerous different ways to do harnessing and I may show or explain a couple of different ways that other people do do it, but, but mostly I'm trying to show the way that I do mine. In the process of me showing how I do mine, I'm not trying to change your way of harnessing your horses. Um, the other ways are just perfectly fine to do it too, but this, this is like I said, this is the way I'm doing mine. Um, so we went over all the parts last week, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with that. Um, so we'll start right in. I'm gonna use Ken for a uh, guinea pig this morning. I might throw a harness on Bill too, so you can see a couple different angles of me harnessing horses. Um, I have actually had a, a shoulder injury, tendonitis in my arm right here that's been bothering me for the past, oh my goodness, probably four or six months now. And I was having a terrible time harnessing horses. And I even went so far as to try to, to try to get something different to do. Get over Bill, uh, Ken. I, I put up this pulley thinking maybe I could do something to help me uh, harness the horse. I thought maybe I'd put a string on that and, and put it on the harness and lift it up. I actually never tried it yet, and I'm not going to right now because the last few weeks, my shoulder is actually feeling better. I've been putting ice on it like three times a day, and that seems to be helping. Um, so <laughs> if anybody has some ideas um, on any different way to harness a horse by having some sort of pulley mechanism to help them lift the harness, I'd love to hear about it because I can imagine someday down the road that could be an issue for me. Although right now it's doing pretty good, so I wanna, I wanna harness them regular um, now that I can. Also, if anyone has some, have had troubles with tendonitis and they get great ideas and great uh, remedies for that, please let me know that too. Okay, so let's get started. So, this is a collar like I explained in the last video and this goes on first. Now some people will um, take the sweat pad partially off and put it over. Some people will unhitch the top here and put it over. For myself, I train all my horses to be able to do it without removing anything off the collar. So I would just throw this right over their heads. Some people actually put it on upside down and then flip it which I don't see how that's even possible when you've got a full sweat pad and everything, but uh, I don't do it that way anyways. So what I do is I just put it right over the heads. So let's come into Ken's style, get up again. It's very important to have a horse to, uh, to learn how to step over so that when you're coming into the, his style for anything, he doesn't shove you and push you into the wall. Um, especially when you go to harness them, they need to be able to get over and so I've showed this before, what I do is I'll take my thumb and push them right over. If they don't move over good enough, I will actually kick their feet and push them over because you want all the room you can have to do this job. But usually all you have to do is say, get over, and they, usually or they, you don't even have to say anything and they know. Yes, but that's because they've been trained that way. Yeah. But this is very important if you've got a horse to do that to, so they learn to get over so you have room to work. So I take the hitch rope, unhitch that, and thread it through the collar. So it's through the collar, and then I just go like that. My horses are used to it. They just actually help me. They actually shove their head through as I'm picking the collar up. Now it's important to pick up really high on the bottom, because on the bottom part of the collar is the largest spot, so that's what you want to go through the head. So just pick up really high, 
and it goes right over. Let me show you that one more time. Believe you me, it doesn't go that easy when I try to do it. So I'm holding my right hand on the bottom and I'm shoving this up really high. Just like that. Okay, collar's on. Let's go right directly to the harness. It's so cute how he puts his head down. Now, one thing about him is, is you've got to be kind of fast because he'll go down and eat more hay and then the collar will flop down. So that's one thing. It's nice to do this when they're, they're not hungry. So they stand there with their head up and the collar stays in place. Especially today with this explaining, I'm going to be late getting up there and he'll probably have knocked it down already. So I hang my harnesses with the hames on my harness rack and then just the britching hangs over like that. So what I do is pull the britching off, put it over my right shoulder and slide it out of there. So I have it on my right shoulder, but you gotta be careful. And you gotta do this kind of fast. If you're really slow, you run into all kinds of troubles. So you gotta kind of do it in one fast fluid motion. So you get it over your shoulder like this. Now some people will actually put the back pad over their shoulder and other things. But for myself, I've been doing just like this for years and I like it just, just the bridging. So then I'll come up here. The Hames have a top ring which your lines go through and the bottom ring here. I grab them right around here or even a little bit lower type of thing. Now when I grab them here before I pull it off I make sure nothing's caught up. Sometimes my pole straps will actually snap into something from the other side and then, then you're in trouble. So I make sure nothing's messed up there. I make sure my lines are on the outside of the Hames. I check back and I see his collar's messed up a little bit. Brenda can you just go yep. slide his collar back in place? Kenny. And we'll try and do this fast so it stays there. If it doesn't, I just deal with it. So then I grab my hames, like I said, and then I will pick my right arm really high to be able to go on. So I walk on like this with my left arm, just a normal, comfortable spot. And then my right arm at about a 90 degree angle of the other one. And then as I walk in, I lift everything a little bit to throw it on the top. And I like to throw it in front of the collar. Not on top of the collar, but in front of it. That tends to help hold the harness as you come back to grab everything else to throw over the top. It stays in place better. So I usually grab my outside tug, sometimes my belly girth, and my back pad at the same time, and throw it over like that. So it tends to stay there. Then I come down and grab the britching the further side of the bridge and with the tug right here and I'll throw that over and I put it so the britching is in the center of his butt so the back pad is in place so everything is kind of lined up there I do not let the britching go over his butt because it's very difficult to hit your hames if that happens so if you leave everything up here then you can come up here and take your hands and try to position this in place in that groove of the collar. Now, you don't always get the further hem where you want it to, so you come over here. Jump right in that manger, Brenda. So then, I will Sorry. slide my head underneath and grab that hem. Wait a minute, let me show. Which is still in the top groove, and I will position that where it belongs. And then I come back here and make sure that after you use a harness for a while in a collar, you'll actually get grooves in your collar here so you know where it belongs. But make sure it's centered so it's in the right spot in the collar. And then like I explained on my Haim fastener, it's so simple to drop that in place, snap that in place. Now I can see a little gap right here. That's because this Haim is a little bit too high. So I'm going to do this, and that fits better. So that will stay in place now. So then we walk back and pull the britching over his butt. <coughs> if my camera lady could hurry up and get back here. There. <laughs> so now I walk back and grab the britching. And just kind of walk it down over his butt 
A lot of times I will grab these two straps here. Like right now he's putting his head down. When his head goes down, his collar goes down. So that means he's pulling on everything here. So if I grab here, I can actually grab with two different, two hands, one on each side, and then I can give it a good pull. That pulls that collar back on his shoulders where it belongs and allows me to slide the britchin down. After it's down, I put my hand underneath the tail and lift it up. Now, all my harnesses have croupers. So, you need to position the crouper where it belongs. On this particular harness, my crouper is actually underneath this strap here. On my other harness, I actually have it over the top. On this one here, I want it under because I have all these decorations which I like to see, so I put the crouper underneath. So anyways, so now you just hitch the crouper. Now sometimes, with Ken especially, he's trying to eat hay, so you got to give this a good tug, pull this back, pick up his tail, flip that crouper underneath, and buckle it in place. So then, all you have left is hitching the belly girth. Get it, get it. So the belly girth is always on the further side of the harness. So it's just a matter of going underneath their bellies and reaching over and grabbing it. Of course, with a young horse, that could scare a horse, but my horses are all used to it, so it's not a problem. And there's different belly girths. This particular one goes around the D-ring and loops in place. How do the, else do they go? I will show you on Bill's harness. That's a little bit different. Oh, okay, good. Um, what have I missed? They, people will look at a harness and just be so overwhelmed with all these straps, thinking it's such a job to harness. But there's really only two things, well, three things to hitch. You got your hame fastener, you got your belly girth, and you got your crouper. And a lot of harnesses don't even have croupers on, so it's just two things. Wait, do that again so that we, I, I'll show it when you say it one more time. So you got your, just say, so you got your hang fastener. So you have your hang fastener and your belly girth. And then if you have a crouper, then your crouper. And those are the only three things you actually have to connect. I don't know if you want to get into this today, but what if it's a Western style harness as opposed to a D-ring? That is a little bit different. And no, I don't think I'm going to get into it because that's not what I'm trying to, to show. Okay. So um, the belly girth is always the last thing to go on and it's always the first thing to come off. I shouldn't say the first thing because you unhitch the crouper um, before you unhitch the belly girth a lot of times. But uh, Many times you do that before you even bring them back into the yes. stall, correct? And the purpose of n not forgetting to unhitch the belly girth before you try to unharness it is if you try to unharness a horse and that belly girth is there and it, it actually, s maybe it's loose or something and slides back before you realize it, then you, it's right around their hind legs and you're in trouble. So, you, you know, he's going to get in some serious trouble with that. So, got to make sure you always unhitch your belly girth. Okay, so let's just uh, do Bill also so that you can see um, uh, one more time. And uh, I won't even explain it, I will just do it, but I'll do it slowly and I'll have Brenda get up there high so she can get a different angle. So Brenda, if you just jump yeah. right up there, we can do this. Forget the cat. I know, but I'm sorry, Bill. And then see, I was, I should have told Bill it was coming. Billy, I'm coming in, okay, honey? And I don't want you to be alarmed, but I am coming in. All my horse's collars go on really nice except for Bill's. Bill's is a fairly brand new collar and it fits him nice, but um, it, it goes over his head kind of hard. He's kind of got a big head for the size of his neck. Um, so I have to actually really push pretty hard. So what I do with Bill when I put it on is I will have him back up a little bit so I can get both hands on, my, on the collar so that I can help him push it on. He'll push himself, but I have to be able to hold it. So I'll show you what I mean. Back, 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 back. Oh. Hey. Hey. So I pick up really high, hold both hands. And as he helps me, I walk it right on with both hands. Cute. So let me put the harness on him now. As you see, I do it in one fluid motion and throw up 
in the front of his collar. My Belgians are so much easier to harness than the Pertrons. It's amazing. The Pertrons are just a couple inches taller than them, but just that couple inches makes a big difference. So I've got the Hames up here, come back, grab my back pad and my outside tug and toss it over and then straighten my britchin so it's in the center of his back. Back pad's set up. And now his hames are way in the front of the way in the front of the collar, which is good. I can grab right here, kind of right here, lift it right up, and drop it right into that groove. So then most of the time I can just reach right over my hand and pull it right in place. Boom, like that. Walk back here, pull his britching over, hitch his Cooper, and hitch his belly girth. Now this belly girth, like I said, this one's a little bit different than the other one. This one has a short strap hanging from the D-ring at all times. And, and I can't grab his belly girth. Usually it's right there, but it's probably twisted around the tug. So I have to push him over. No, it's actually hanging right here on the other stall divider. So I drop it back down and reach down and grab it. That's probably because I took it off. So here. this one has, so this one has a buckle right on the end of the belly girth. And you slide it in place and match it. So that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, it's one of those jobs. If you don't understand it, it seems so overwhelming to do. And it can be if, for example, if this harness isn't put away properly and I'll actually unharness them too. If it's not put away properly, it can get twisted up and then you put it on, you're ready to put it on and it's all twisted up into a heap. And then it's most definitely hard to, to do. So let me show you how I unharness them at the same time. So unhitch the Cooper, which is usually done outside the way I do it when I'm bringing them in. And then unhitch the belly girth. Usually when I'm working here on the farm, the horses that come in from their work, they don't have a halter on. So um, there's nothing there and they just come in and eat. So I would just come up here and unhitch my hame fastener. I try to grab that further hame and give it a good shot. Throw it back on his back as far as I can. And then the collar comes off the same way it went on, except for backwards. And with the horse without having a halter on, it slips off really easy. And then as soon as I take it off, With the halter on, I unhitch the rope and hitch him back up. He's good. When I don't have the halter on, as soon as I take the collar off, I'll put his halter right on so he doesn't take off. And I grab the further hame ball, kind of slide it over like this, put my left hand underneath the top hame strap, and there again, in one kind of fluid motion, I pull with my left hand so the hame is over his back on my side. It still sits there. And now, it's important to do it kind of quick. You pull it off with your left hand in the process, come and grab the back of the britchin and it just all falls right off. You slide it over your shoulder. Walk it in. Throw it into place. Then I come back and I grab the collar. Collars are always hung upside down. Why is that? They hold the shape better. So let's just unharness Ken. Okay, so I'm gonna hitch the Kerper on Ken. And when I mean unhitch it, I don't mean just on Bucca, I mean take it out from underneath the tail. So it's completely free of his tail. So then I come down here, unhitch the belly girth. And there again, I don't just unhitch it, I make sure it drops and it's free from this side of the harness. 
So then I unhitch the paint fastener with both hands, and give it a good shove so it ends up back on the back. And then the collar comes off. And I'll just leave the collar in the manger while I'm taking off the, off the harness. So I'm gonna do this just like I said before, kind of one fluid motion. Okay, that does it. Any questions from you, Brenda, or from our audience? And if we have some from our audience, please put it in the comments below um, as to how I did this. If, if, if you've got different ways to do it, by all means, uh, put it in the comments because myself can still learn from what way you do things and, and other people that watch my videos could learn also, so. Nope, I don't have any questions. It's just not as easy as it looks. That's all I have to say. Okay. Well, we have a great day, and we'll see you next Friday for the next in our series. Uh, next week, we'll be driving the single horse. So I will take maybe maybe Ken. I might use Ken and show you how to drive him around those first lessons. Not of the horse, because you may not be ready to train a horse, but... But you just, if you just bought a horse, and that's what I'm kind of gearing these, <coughs> this series for, if you just bought a horse, how do you go about driving this horse? And so that's what we'll talk about next time, next Friday. So have a good day.